And good morning, everyone. I am pleased to welcome you to this gathering. Just over three years ago, I came before you to share the very difficult news that we at the Diocese of Cleveland would be closing and merging parishes in an effort to create a stronger, more vibrant presence for our church throughout the eight counties of the Diocese of Cleveland. That announcement came after nearly a decade-long strategic planning process and after a two-year clustering and collaboration process. Our reconfiguration plan reflected a proactive strategy to address three major challenges we faced. Population shifts in the region, financial hardships for many of our parishes, and fewer priests available for ministry. The Diocese of Cleveland was certainly not alone in facing such challenges. The Catholic Church in the United States has undergone a profound change over the past decade. According to Georgetown University research, through a combination of closing and merges of parishes, the number of parishes, Catholic parishes, in our country has declined from 19,000 parishes in 2000 to 17,800 in 2010. And downsizing has occurred in many of the dioceses in the Midwest, including Detroit, Buffalo, and Toledo. Here in our diocese, closings and merges resulted in a net reduction of 50 parishes. While change is difficult, thousands of Catholics found new parish homes over the past three years. And as we reported to you in January of this year, clergy and laity working together are experiencing parish communities that are better able to provide pastoral and spiritual leadership and presence to the faithful and to the wider community. As you know, parishioners of some parishes chose to appeal my decisions to the clergy, uh, to the congregation for the clergy in Rome. It's important to note that they have every right under church law to do what they did. While the appeals were pending, the diocese maintained parish buildings and property and safeguarded sacred objects. Loyal and very passionate parishioners kept alive their spirit. On March 14 of this year, I officially received decrees from the congregation reversing several of my decisions. Just as church law provided the parishioners a process for appealing my decisions, so too does the same church law provide a process for me to appeal to the apostolic signatura. Our present situation is very complex with no easy or perfect solution. With the help though of many advisors, including the members of the Presbyteral Council, members of the Diocesan Pastoral Council, many clergy, laity, and experts in church law, I have engaged in a prayerful and thoughtful process over the past few weeks to understand the decrees and to decide upon an appropriate course of action. <clears throat> During these Easter days, I often think of Jesus' first words as he appeared to the apostles after rising from the dead. Peace be with you. I now say it's time for peace and unity in the Diocese of Cleveland. 
I will not appeal the decrees to the apostolic signatura. Doing so would prolong the process for a number of years and would create more uncertainty and continue to divide our Catholic community. Therefore, I will move forward and carry out the Congregation for the Clergy's directives regarding the parishes in an orderly manner. More than ever, this is a time for all Catholics to come together with God's help and strive to strengthen our diocesan church in serving the pastoral needs and spiritual needs of all the faithful. While major decisions on staffing and other matters have yet to be made, we are preparing to carry out the directives from the Congregation for the Clergy regarding the following parishes. In Akron, St. Mary and St. John the Baptist parishes. In Bedford, St. Mary parish. In Cleveland, St. Adelbert, St. Barbara, St. Casimir, St. Emmerich, St. Patrick, St. Peter, and St. Wendelin parishes. In Lakewood, St. James Parish, and in Lorraine, St. Mary Parish. So what's next? There are many unique issues that will be addressed for each of those situations, and staffing will be a significant challenge for us as a diocese. With fewer active priests available to serve the entire eight-county area, we will be forced to spread clerical resources thinner. In preparing to open the parishes, I will assign and work closely with clergy leaders to coordinate planning for the restoration of parish operations, the return of sacred objects that were removed for safekeeping, and any cleanup or minor maintenance that may be required. We will work with the priests and parishioners as they reestablish their parishes. While specifics vary, the parishes that are reopening will face many of the challenges that led to their being closed. As is true for all parishes, it will be essential for each of these parishes to demonstrate on an ongoing basis that they have the active membership and the financial wherewithal to sustain themselves. As I said years ago, three years ago, the church is primarily about people, their faith, and not about buildings. The task for the church is, the tasks for the church are to worship God fittingly, to bring the message of Jesus Christ to all people, to reach out and serve the poor and marginalized among us, and to help people become holy and more closely united with God. Today I pray that together we can fulfill all of these important responsibilities. Thank you very much.